Greetings my brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Today my topic is soul of my soul. We need to acknowledge that spirit, that spirit of God is the soul of our soul. So we know that as a human person we have the body, the soul and the spirit. The body is what we have, the physical body, where our five senses are given us the graces of God. And then the breath of God is the spirit of God which is given to us. So we have the body and the five senses given to us with our free will and that's the soul. And then we have the spirit which is God's breath which connects us to God. And then if we don't want to connect with God, then that spirit is connected by the evil one. So that's going against God. But when we have that soul with those five senses and the free will, we take that word soul and the soul of that soul, it's God's spirit. So we need to acknowledge that when we need to ask God's spirit to be the soul of my soul, the soul of our souls. Let's look at Revelation chapter 21 verse 1 to 4. Even so it is well with my soul, saved from the wrath of God. We can enjoy eternal bliss with him forever. When we ask and we acknowledge that the soul of our souls is God's spirit who, and the God's spirit which connects us to him to have that relationship, then we will be saved. We do not have to worry about anything. But we need to ask God how we can claim that soul of my soul to be him. Let us see from scriptures how we can get this point clear. Now in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23. May your Holy Spirit, soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have the body, we have the spirit and we have the soul. We need to surrender everything to him, the creator God. When we do that, we will be blameless because we, when we surrender to him, we will follow his commandments of love. Loving him with all our heart, mind and soul and loving our fellow human beings likewise. So when we do these two commandments, we will be blameless in the eyes of God and we will be pleasing to him. So now, you need to understand, the soul is unique. It's given to each and every human person on this planet. That's unique. The spirit of God is the breath of God that tells the soul to be connected with our creator God. But the soul has the power over that spirit, the free will, because God has given the free will, that free will can allow the spirit not to be connected to God, rather go against God or go keep it for the human soul himself or herself. But the spirit is that part of God, that is that part of the being that connects the soul to God always. That is surrendering or the free will and claiming the divine will from God. Now, Soul is life eternal. Soul will remain both physically and spiritually. If it has to be spiritually alive, the soul has to surrender to the Creator God. Then it will be there forever. If the soul does not connect to the Spirit of God and it remains outside of that, then it will be for eternal damnation. But the Spirit of God
is the very breath of God given to us. Now, when you look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 26, Jesus asks what it would profit for a man to gain the whole world but lose the soul. So, the meaning of our existence, the purpose of our being on this planet Earth is defined here. We, did, we don't have to win or all get all the wealth of the physical world. But it is not wrong if we are going to get that based on our works of honesty and truthfulness. But at the same time, we need to equally focus on the spiritual wealth as well. How we are going to use these blessings to the benefit of our fellow human beings. If we do not use that, then the wealth what we have in the physical world is not worth anything if you are not doing that because you are losing your soul. You are not connecting to God's laws and commandments. So that is what is not worth. Jesus doesn't say that you need to be poor and you, know, you need to be not working or just only praying. No, you got to work hard. You got to do your best and you got to use all your skills. And he has said about your talents. If you have your 50 talents, make it 500. If you have 500 talents, make it 5,000. If you have 5,000 talents, make it 5 million. If you have 5 million talents, make it 5 billion. And it, the list goes on. But at the same time, you need to utilize that riches, that well, the wealth of the world for the benefit of our fellow human beings. That would gain the spiritual wealth. So we need to save our soul and use our five senses given to us to the benefit of our fellow human beings. And to, and to glorify our creator God. If we do that, then it is pleasing to God. If not, it is we are led to eternal damnation. Now, in Acts chapter 7 verse 51, we find that We will do all the evil things if we do not have a spiritual life. We can enjoy this world and live a life of easy living, you know, with all our wealth and, you know, we can enjoy the money and then we go away. We don't have a spiritual life. That's gone. You have your soul and your soul is condemned for eternity. But at the same time in Romans chapter 8, 16, if we give all our utilize our what's given to us what's bestowed on us the time talent and treasure for the benefit of our fellow human beings then we belong to him even giving our own physical bodies as bread as jesus himself became the living bread to each and every one of the human beings here so just like that if we follow him then we can ask jesus to be the soul of our soul so when Jesus becomes soul of our soul, we would use everything what we have in this physical world for the benefit of others. Also, for the in the spiritual world, we can use it for the benefit of others. First, when we become spiritually rich, we can start even sharing that spiritual richness to the upliftment of our brothers who have not yet got that message. And that is the time we spend our time, our talent, our treasure and give the message and proclaim the message of God to the well-being of our fellow beings. Now, in Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, Jesus himself tells us, Come to me all who are overburdened and I will give you rest. My yoke is easy and to carry. And that is the reason we seek Jesus to be the soul of our souls. When we get up in the morning, thank God for the beautiful day given to us. And then we should ask Jesus to be the soul of my soul for that day. Daily bread. And then keep continuing that. And he will guide us. He will make us use those five senses. 
for the greater glory of God and for the love of the fellow human being. Now in Philippians chapter 4 verse 7, And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The soul and the heart, the physical world, our heart is connected to our physical well-being and our heart pretty much reacts to the visibility of all the wealth and the richness of this physical world. But at the same time, our mind keeps telling the soul, which has got the five senses, it, the free will, it keeps telling, no, your spirit, God's spirit is within you. You are the temple of the living God and it has to be connected to God always. And then we, our hearts and minds can be together if we make Jesus the soul of our souls. Because he says that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Therefore, we should ask Lord Jesus to be the soul of our souls. Now in Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10, Fear not, for I am with you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will uphold you with my righteous hand. So God, Jesus has been such a blessing for us. He gives each and every human person the solace and the comfort what we need in this mind of confusion and having little understanding. Jesus says, just come to me. How can we go to him? The word of God. The word of God is alive and active, rich in its message, in its being. So we need to go and immerse ourselves in the word of God. And then when we ask at the beginning of the day for Jesus to be the soul of my soul, let my five senses be in you. And, and I see, if I see, it is because of you. If I speak, it's of you. If I hear, I should hear your word. If I'm using these hands, these are your hands. This is, these are your feet. So when I look at it and this heart is yours, then we can have that empathy for our fellow human beings, that compassion for that human being. We get all the characteristics of Jesus Christ, the mercy, the peacefulness, the happiness, the joy, always helping and seeking forgiveness for our fellow human beings. Now in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, it's once again another comforting word. If we ask Jesus to be the soul of our souls, he tells us, do not be anxious of, about anything, for I am with you. So that's the greatest happiness we can have, to claim Jesus to be the soul of our souls. One Old Testament, Old Testament verse, Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, Have I not commanded you? Do not be frightened. I will go with you till the end of time. I have overcome the world. And I am with you and you have sought me. Therefore, I will remain with you always. Don't worry, I am with you. Even if you are carrying your cross, the worst form of suffering, I am with you. There is hope in my resurrection. And that's what we need to seek at the beginning of the day. Soul of my soul. Now finally, in Matthew chapter 6 verse 25, that famous verse, Do not be anxious. Do not worry about what you will eat or drink. Because God knows you need these things. When Jesus becomes our soul, when he is in our five senses, what do we have to worry about? We just surrender to him and seek him. But at the same time, as I said, we need to use, seek him to help us use our talents to produce that hundredfold or sixtyfold or thirtyfold by being by clinging to the vine. We are the branches and he is the vine. Therefore, we have to cling to him. Finally, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Uh, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. I know because we have so many false gods, so many God men who keep talking about various things that you can do everything on your own. Just you be, you have your consciousness and you know you can connect with your cosmos and you are the cosmos all that is good but unless you surrender and acknowledge 
that Jesus Christ to be the soul of your soul, to be the soul, to be in your five senses, to be, if to be, make your body, the physical body as the temple of the Holy Spirit within you, we are not going to see the truth. And this is the truth. If we ask Jesus to be the soul of my soul every day, and he will be in all our five senses and in our heart and in our mind. And we can worship our creator God completely in total surrender. And at the same time, we can love our fellow human beings, acknowledging the presence of the eternal God in them. And that would take us to a beautiful day of happening where you could share our time, talent, treasure to please God. Thank you, my brothers and sisters.